my name is Colleen Offill. And I'm Greg Offill. Welcome. Welcome. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Yes, we're so thankful that we can all congregate virtually, especially in uh, these turbulent times. Please let us know that you're watching by clicking the Contact Us link. Here, you'll also find information on the Kids Club and the Coffee Corner where we can uh, all gather after the service. You can also click on the donate link for your offering. So turn up the volume and get ready to, to praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Colleen and Greg. It's great to have everybody here today. My name is Matt. I'm the pastor at United Church and online here and in Bath and Gunnisonville. Just glad you're here with us today. I'm excited to start a new series today, a new Christmas series. First of all, I'd like you to hit the contact us button that will pop up a little connection card and uh, if you'd fill that out we just want to make sure i just want to make sure you feel welcome this is such an important time to connect with each other um, it'll be good for you it'll be good for the community so I encourage you to click on that button also today we have communion i encourage you to participate with communion you're going to need something to eat and drink some crackers some uh, bread chips something like that and something to drink so gather that as we're getting started here we also are going to be lighting a candle in a moment. And then later we're going to light an Advent candle. So you want to have a candle close by and uh, light that with us to remember God's presence. And an Advent candle, you can just make that by gathering five candles together if you'd like. Set that out someplace in your, in your house and light those with us as we go through this season of Advent working up to Christmas. The Christmas offering this year is going to some really great causes right here in our own community. There are two other new things happening right now. One of them is a memorial wall that we're building and we'd love your participation in this. Very easy, go to our church website and you'll see if you scroll down the, to the bottom of the first page there, you'll see the memorial wall that's just starting to be built to remember those people that we're grieving over that you've lost. This has been a hard time to grieve during the COVID crisis. And we want you to put family or friends names in, and if you have a picture, you can drop that in too and help us just participate with you and encourage each other as we grieve through this difficult time. We're also wanting to celebrate the holidays in a similar way. We'd love you to send a picture of yourself, a selfie with some Christmas decorations around your house just snap a, a regular selfie and send it to the addresses there we'll be able to see each other uh, we'll work that in the next few weeks next few sundays so start sending those in we'd love to see your face there is a special christmas eve service at five o'clock seven o'clock thursday december 24th make sure you set that out if you look carefully at the program you'll see one other little gem in there there's a god with us um, bible study there are six short devotionals that you can look up and will track right along with us as we go through these few weeks. So get a hold of the candle that you have there and we'll light our first candle of the morning. And we're doing this to remember God's presence with us, that you are not alone, that you are together with all of us today, that God is right there with you. So let's pray a simple prayer together. God, we open up our lives and our hearts to you today. Whatever emotions we're having, whatever struggles, whatever mountaintop experiences, we invite you into those. We are grateful and thankful for the time we have set aside. We open ourselves up to you. We lift up each other. We know there are many of us that are hurting, that are feeling a distance from each other, that are feeling a distance from, en from everyone. So we pray especially for your presence with us. We open ourselves up to that today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we relight the candle of hope. Today we light the second candle on our Advent wreath. This is the candle of peace. Hey. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. 
We will read this from the prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves, in our families, and in the country be peacefully resolved. May there be peace and health in our cities and the countries of the world. Help us see the paths of peace in our lives, and then give us courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that only you are the giver of lasting peace, and that you will always be with us. Amen. This morning, we have Shannon, Kaylin, and Julian with us. Hi. Thank you for lighting our Advent wreath. And we have the questions from Pastor Matt. Where are you traveling this holiday? Our living room. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so this is a different holiday for most of us. What have you not done this year that you miss? I miss everything, really. We've kind of missed everything, so we haven't been able to do much of anything, so I kind of miss everything that we usually do. Come on, try. I miss everything, but I care for my family. But I got miss my dog. But I I don't know. I miss my plants. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Third question. How are you finding joy in this COVID Christmas? I found joy and um, we still get to like put up the Christmas decorations and still celebrate it. It just is a lot different. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, it's going to be a new experience, which is kind of exciting. But at the same time, it's not. But it's still exciting to celebrate Christmas on the virtual Okay, what's the answer? I very miss everything. Dream wrong. We're talking about something happy. Well, yesterday I <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> I like Santa, but and I like Santa. Oh. You like Santa. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Tell everybody <laughs> goodbye. Bye bye. bye. Okay, man's gonna edit that.
Hey kids, it's Miss Jess here. I'm so excited to be here today with you guys and talk. It's Christmas season and we get to talk about the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ's birth. God did a great miracle in Mary's tummy by having baby Jesus grow there. Just like all of us grew in our mommy's bellies, um, we're and we're all miracles and gifts from God. Um, to our family, to our parents, to everybody that we come and encounter with. Um, Jesus is God's gift to us, and he's our Savior. Because Jesus is the Savior, God the Father made a very special way for him to come as a baby. In the Bible, Isaiah 9 says that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In Bible times, God chose Mary to have Jesus as a baby so he could come to earth, live with all the people on the earth, and then die on the cross for our sins. Scripture tells us that when the angel Gabriel, Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, the Holy Spirit will come over you, what he meant was that Mary's pregnancy was a miraculous act that only the Holy Spirit could have made happen. Because Jesus is the savior of this world, he already has a dad who is God the Father. So he didn't need an earthly father in order to be born like you and I did. Jesus' birth is unlike any other birth, and it fulfills prophecy. Isn't that so exciting and amazing? I thought so, and I hope that you guys um, did too. Right now, I'm going to welcome Miss Catherine so that we have a, a craft for you guys today. Good morning, everyone. We're so excited to see you today. We have a craft where we're going to make Jesus in the manger. Everyone's just going to need two popsicle sticks a piece of paper that will represent the manger, a little yellow piece of paper for straw, and a circle for Jesus's head. Casey's here helping me today. And all we need to do is glue our popsicle sticks together. I have actually found that this Elmer's glue or the crafting glue will work really good. We glue the popsicle sticks into a V, put the paper on the popsicle sticks, put the baby's head on, and then any way you kind of want to make it work for some straw, I found just a straight piece of color paper and just cut. And then that way you can kind of move it around, maybe tear a couple pieces off. Glue it on. And then just trim off your edges a little bit. And then we have just a little piece of yarn to make it so we can hang it on our tree. Flip it over and draw a quick face. Well, we kind of made his eyes a little goofy. So just for Sam's benefit, I'll kind of turn him into a, a turtle. Wait for it to dry. And we have our baby Jesus in a manger. We're so glad you were able to join us today. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, kids. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Cooley from the Baptist Church. It's my honor to lead you in the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Hi, everyone. My name is Elisa Webb, and I go to Gunnisonville Church. I'm kind of a newbie there, um, but I miss you all, and I would love to have you join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you all. On the mountain, in the valley, in the crowded streets, or the empty desert, in our hope, and in our waiting, we are never alone. God is with us. It's great to have you with us today. I imagine all of us around the entire area kind of sitting in front of our screens together and worshiping together today. I'm just so glad you're a part of that. Today we're starting a new series called God With Us. And here's what I want to do in this series. I want to bounce off this anchor idea for Christians, this one scripture that we're going to look at for four times. And I've put a copy of that in the newsletter. I've put a copy of that in the program. And I encourage you to pull that scripture out and put it up somewhere in your house, maybe in your bathroom on the mirror is usually the best spot. So you see it, remind yourself of it all the way through from now till Christmas. Each time we're together, we're going to be thinking about this one concept. You know, Christmas and especially Christmas Eve is the time when more people than ever are open to the idea of coming to church, of participating, of seeing what church is like. So I encourage you to think about who could you welcome to be a part of worship, to uh, tune in, to tune in online. The scripture is this, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You know, for most Christians, it's easy to believe in God when we're on the mountaintops, when things are going great, when we get a raise or when our team wins or when MSU basketball beats Duke uh, in an away game for the first time, when your kids sleep through the night for the first time, or when you get that parking spot you've been waiting for. But listen, it's more difficult to to lean into God, to believe in God when you're alone or you're scared or you're worried or you're battling depression or you're hurting or you get bad news. It's interesting too, isn't it, that our lives can be going along just fine. It's like we're kind of living on the mountaintop, living the dream. And yet if we have an issue in one part of our lives, this one pocket of our lives, that it can bring serious weight to our whole beings and we struggle, we go through difficulty. Well, if you take that concept and you look at what the year we've been through in 2020, it's like kicking a man when he's down. When he's down. You've heard of that phrase, right? Get me through December, get me through 2020. Whenever any one thing happens in our lives, it seems to be multiplied. It seems to hurt a little bit more. It was about three weeks ago now when Lori and I got word that her younger brother, David, had come down with COVID. And I'm going to tell you, that was one of those times when things were going along pretty well. And then that one pocket, that one place in my life um, just kind of weighed me down tremendously. And I think it was partly because of all of the other things that have been going on in life, the struggle that most of us have had that a lot of us are experiencing. What struck me in this situation was that he didn't need to have this COVID. I mean, it's a pandemic and I understand it's all around the world, but perhaps if more people had, if we had had less spread, he wouldn't have gotten this um, in the place where he lived. It was hard to take this idea that he hadn't done anything, he hadn't gone anywhere, he hadn't been with anybody, he hadn't not been careful and yet he had contracted this disease. That's the way it is sometimes in our lives. Things can be going along well, and then in this one area, um, my marriage is going great, but my kids are struggling. I feel really close to God, but I've lost my job. 
Christmas is a, a real blessing and then you hear someone in your life has cancer. We may enjoy God on the mountaintops, but we really get to know God intimately in the valleys. I encourage you to make some notes as we go through these couple of verses from Psalm 84. Here they are. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Now this valley of Baca, the valley of Baca that this Bible talks about is a desert country. There are thorns in this area. People would have known it for their wild animals that were there, vipers, cats, and incredible danger in most valleys. The psalmist starts this out by saying, blessed are those whose strength is in you. If you haven't developed a faith muscle, or other people would just say, if you, have, if you don't know God personally, um, what you have is all that you have. You understand what I mean there? I mean, when you're at the end of your rope, you are at the end of your rope. That's all you have. When you're exhausted and you can't take it anymore, you think you can't make it, you're just depending on yourself. But if you've developed this faith muscle, the ability to see beyond your circumstances a bit, you have this, you have access to heavenly strength. That's why the psalmist says, blessed are those whose strength is in you. When you get to the end of your rope, when we get to the end of our strength, there's divine strength for us to tap into. Notice this, it doesn't say that blessed are those who make it on their own, who pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Blessed are those who are really determined to get through the valley. We don't want to need other people. We don't want to be financially dependent. We don't want to be emotionally dependent. We want to be completely good on our own. It's a very American way of life. I don't want to trust people even. I don't want to, I don't want to need people to be there for me. I don't want to need anybody. Independence is a good thing up to a point. Because you and I were created to depend on God and depend on others. Some of you, like me, need to learn this and put this into your life a little more. When you are weak, the Bible says, His strength, God's strength is made perfect in you. And God is available and ready to help you. So get this nugget of spiritual wisdom. The psalmist says, What joy for those whose strength is in the Lord, who have set their minds. That's the key. You've got to set your minds. We have to set our minds. Wherever you are sitting, and just say this with me. I've set my mind. I've set my mind. Set your minds on things above, not on things below. Colossians says, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is excellent, praiseworthy, think about those things. Set your mind. It matters what you think about. I have a friend whose uh, wife is a school psychologist, and she has a PhD in psychology. She teaches cognitive behavioral therapy. You know what that is? The cognitive behavioral, cognitive, what you're thinking, behavior, how you're acting. And the whole idea is this, what you think matters. When you think about something, it sets your mind and it, and it determines what happens to you. She says this, when you wake up at night, don't say, I can't sleep. Don't let your mind focus on that. That's the worst thing you can do. Don't say that. Don't say, I can't sleep. Because if you say, I can't sleep, it's going to perpetuate the idea. Your anxiety is going to go up. You're going to be thinking about all the things that are going to happen because you can't sleep, how you're going to be tired tomorrow. You're not going to get as much work done. Uh, you're going to be grumpy. Well, all those other things. Find other positive things to set your mind on. I often will remember the Lord's Prayer and just kind of begin to walk through saying that and thinking about the various phrases. Some of us need to hear this right now because we are in the valley. Listen, fix your mind on God. My heart may be anxious, but my mind is fixed on God. My soul might be aching, but my mind is fixed on God. My emotions are racing, but my mind is fixed on God. I have too much to do. My marriage is in a bad place. My in-laws are, are driving me crazy. How am I going to pay for Christmas? All of that 
through all of that, my mind is fixed on God. Verse 6, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. Listen, we may be in the valley, but it is not our destination. Did you get that? We're just passing through as they pass through the valley of Baca. We may be in the valley, but it is not our destination. We are just passing through this valley, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? I will fear no evil. Verse 6 says this, As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The King James Version says this just beautifully. They make it a place of springs. The King James says they make it a well. Here's the idea. When you're in a dry place, dig a well. Dig a hole to catch the water. Or dig deep and, and have a well spring up. Buried in this little piece of scripture is a really cool nugget of spiritual truth. It's saying that we dig even before there's rain. Right? You prepare a place. Make a spot in your life where God can show up and be present, where God can be faithful in your situation. Apparently, Jesus had this same kind of philosophy. In the New Testament, there's this guy with a withered hand. And instead of saying, you know, I'm just going to heal you, but, you know, and zaps him and you're healed. No, he says, stretch out your hand and I will heal it. You show me that you believe that I can do it and I, can, and I will do it. The man who couldn't walk for 38 years, Jesus didn't just say, you know, by my power, you're healed. He said, stand up, take your mat and walk. If you dig it, God will fill it. If you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. If you seek me, you'll find me. If you make room for me, I'll reveal myself to you. Rarely will God reveal himself if you're rushed. Can you imagine Moses in the burning bush? Uh, if he was just driving by at 75 miles an hour. That, that's just not going to happen, right? Be still and know that I am God. We have to prepare for the presence of God. That's exactly what I needed to do when I heard about Dave, Lori's younger brother. I took some time I, uh, by myself. I, I got alone. I prayed. I, I wrote down my feelings and I sent them to a couple pastor friends of mine. I so, you know, I needed God at that moment. I needed to make a well. Now, I didn't hear God back in an audible voice, um, but I did sense God filling me back up. It took a while, but I was in the valley, and I found God was there with me when I took the time to make a well. Here's the challenge for us. We've got to trust God while we're in the valley. We've got to dig the wells while we're in the dry land. It's easy to enjoy God on the mountaintop. It's in the valley where we really get to know who God is. God's strength is there. Fix your mind. Dig a well. Listen to this scripture. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your, your right hand will hold me fast. God is with us. God is with you in that moment. We're gonna take communion together this morning, so I encourage you to get a hold of the juice, the bread, uh, the crackers, what you have there, and take communion with us together. I want to remind you that God is with you right where you are, that God is with us. That's what we're celebrating today. And what better way to do that than communion? You're welcome to have communion with us today. You don't have to be a member of our church or any church for that matter. If you just want to be connected with God, to love God, to love your neighbor, then we encourage you to have communion with us today. As we get ready to take communion together, let's pray. As an act of faith, right now we set our minds on your presence with us. And we dig this well of communion, of just taking a moment to 
to let you be present with us. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body of Christ, given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ, given for you. Amen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hear this blessing. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's great to be in church with you today. Make sure you click on the coffee corner link and we'll see you there for a couple minutes. Also, there are two other links, the give link and the connect card link. Make sure you find those. Click on those. Let us know you're here. Have a great day and we'll see you next week.